Everybody's worrying about these MSOs and stuff like that. And I say to them, why do you care if the Akark dealer gives it to the state because nobody from the state is ever going to be able to come into any court and ever make a claim that that car has something to do with them. Okay. See, that's what I'm trying to say. I mean, I've, I've seen it. Uh, I've seen, I've, believe me, I've seen that argument a million times. And it's like, uh, well, I just helped these folks in Indiana the other day, and it was like uh, three sentences I gave that man to ask the prosecutor, like, are you making a claim to my property. Right. And it was, it, was, it, was, it was just that simple. Are you making a claim I owe a debt? And then the judge and then I, was, I, saw some, I said, are you making a, do you believe I owe a debt to you? Mm-hmm. See, because a plaintiff's got to appear in court. So if the state is the plaintiff, the plaintiff still has to appear. It's an ancient rule. You can just Google it. You just Google Google plaintiff must appear and you'll see like a million hits from all over the world and as soon as you look at any one of those that say plaintiff must appear it'll say the rules of court and then underneath it it'll it just make a nice little simple statement it'll say plaintiff must appear and then underneath it'll be the rules for the defendant and it'll say the rules for the defendant the, de- the defendant may appear or he may be represented in court but the plaintiff must always appear the plaintiff can't be only appear by counsel or by attorney. The plaintiff right. must appear. He must physically be in that building. So if you're being accused of doing something wrong by the plaintiff, you have the right to cross-examine a plaintiff. Every defendant has a right to face his accuser and cross-examine his accuser. How are you going to cross-examine his attorney? So that would be the head of the motor Department of Motor Vehicles? I'd like to see Mr. or Mrs. Is it, is it male or female? Yeah, the Park Motor Vehicles. I don't know. I've never met yeah. a Mr. or Mrs. The Park DMV. Yeah. yeah. So, like I said, you know, that's that's what I said. That's funny. The uh, the folks from Indiana. If you listen to last week's show, they'll say, "Oh boy, the judge said, oh, the judge said he hasn't seen something like this come across his court." He says for about 20 years, and then he like named the guy. He's like, "Oh, do you remember that old crazy guy, Bob? Man, yeah, he did something like this like 20 years ago." He's I ain't seen something like this in like 20 years. And then he was reading what I gave the the guy could barely read and write English. The man's name is Brian, and he said he's got a second, third grade education. He said they always used to make fun of him whenever he went to court because he's a little Irish guy, freckles, red hair, the whole bit. He's about five foot three, about 90 pounds. So he used to make fun of him. Even the prosecutor said the last time he was in court two times ago. He said the prosecutor was standing behind him, making all kinds of funny gestures behind the guy, and the judge and the prosecutor were laughing, and every time he turned around to see what the prosecutor and the judge were doing, behind, you know, the prosecutor was doing behind his back, was doing the judge, and the judge said, don't you worry what the prosecutor's doing behind you, you just pay attention to me. So they, they were really mocking this poor little guy, and at this time, man, they didn't mock him at all, and because uh, he was going to cross-examine the prosecutor, because I wanted, he was basically saying, where's the plaintiff? You must be the plaintiff. If you're the plaintiff, you know, you, you, I'm going to have to require you to answer these questions. Are you claiming I owe you a debt? Who's claiming I owe the debt? And it was sort of some child support stuff. And uh, so he, uh, the way I set it up for the man is he only has to pay $30 a uh, month until uh, whatever, 13000 whatever, 8000 whatever he owes his. In South, he hasn't paid in five years. Whatever came out to five years worth of debt. And then I did another one with a lady up there in Indiana. She had bills for her child in the hospital, and they were hateful to her and her child. Every time they went in court, but not last time, they said uh, uh, the judge was really nice to her, and the attorney was really nice to her for the hospital, and uh, set it up so she's only paying five dollars a month. That's it. But they wanted a they wanted to garnish a paycheck. They wanted to issue a warning debt, take all her stuff out of her home. And uh, they were really ugly to her like two times ago, but this time they said they were. She said they were really nice. She said the judge said, "Okay, fine, five dollars. That's it." And the and lawyers for the hospital said, "Okay, fine, that's it," because the hospital didn't have to appear. Mister Mister General Hospital has to appear. Mrs. General Hospital has to appear. The attorney can't appear for the hospital. Not that the plaintiff must appear. So that's what I say to you guys. Why are you all worried about this MSO stuff? Well, uh, the DMV is going to say this, and the state of uh, Indiana is going to say that. Good. 
I hope they got Brewer's set of vocal cords since the last time I met them. Because as far but as I know... Like, we take them in just to the local county court here? Yeah. They were just, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the county. I think it was Knox County. Uh, right. Trying, the no Knox County was south of Nivensville. I'm trying to remember the one no, north of Stark, Stark, Stark Stark County. S-T-A-R-K-E. -E. Yeah, that's all it was. They were just in a... They, well, they were in circuit court because it was considered a felony and it was over $10,000 they were being sued for. Yeah. So in Indiana, you guys got a, like a district court and a circuit court. So uh, yeah, these, these Knox, people going to... Knox County yeah, is to the south of town. Yeah, Knox County south down by Evansville by uh, Vincennes. Yeah. And, uh, and then these folks in Fort Wayne, I, I was in their county. Man, I was in their county for two weeks. I was talking to the lieutenant. And I still don't remember the damn name of that county off the top of my head. But, uh... All right, if, yeah, if I don't... I don't register the vehicle and don't put plates yeah. on it. Uh, no, you, you you show the Secretary of State a um, um, responsibility, financial responsibility layout. They, they show you insurance companies actually have a, on their web page. They'll show you how to do proof of financial responsibility. I I, I could have sworn I put it on my web page. Was going to get insurance on it? Yes. Yeah, my web page is boardmind.org, right? You know that www. Yeah, the insurance part is not on there. And on your documents, you've only got 15 documents on there. You don't have the full 40 documents on your case. Oh, I thought I did. Okay, maybe I don't. But like I said, uh, just Google uh, financial response, proof of financial responsibility. And actually, like Geico will show you how to do it. Uh, yeah. Allstate will show you how to do it. And all you do is, all you have to do is there's like three or four ways the state accepts uh, proof of responsibility. All you have to do is either buy a uh, state bond or you have to, uh, you know, like a state savings bond, you know, like a United States. I was going to buy full coverage on the vehicle, uh, you know. But what I'm saying, if, if the insurance company says, no, we only, we want it insured and we because we, we want to register it and we have to see proof of title, we want all that stuff, I'm just saying, if an insurance company won't let you do it. Yeah, he you know, just asked me for the VIN number and that's all. He would have right. it. Right, so if that's all they want, but sometimes they say, look, uh, we want the VIN number, but we'll give you uh, 30 days to register it and title it. You see what I'm saying? Right. I've seen that. So like I said, if you just Google quote-unquote is the proof of financial responsibility, you'll actually show, see the insurance companies. Like I'm in Maryland right now. They don't yes. need insurance on these cars. They don't need right. them. But what they want to see is proof of financial responsibility. So right. you could either get a state bond you could either put a, a money up in escrow, or I'm trying to remember the third one that you could do. Um, oh, they just flat out uh, tell like, like the state to hold a cash deposit. I mean, it, it's it's pretty simple. I mean, actual insurance companies show you how to do it. So it's not my crazy belief. You know, it's it's factual way the insurance companies tell you how to do it, how to show proof of financial responsibility, and all you do is send it to the secretary of state. The secretary of state acts and be you know you know the governor. That's the secretary's governor, the secretary of state. And the governor is supposed to represent the people. So all you're doing is letting all the people know that you're covered. And if they get into an accident with you, you're fine. So that's all you're trying to get is set up through the secretary of state's office. Okay. And the secretary of state, if you read uh, Malik, and I've been writing back and forth to the secretary of state in Illinois, doing just exactly what you're trying to do here. And uh, the Secretary of State said, I just got your letter today. So today means like uh, 12 o'clock, noon. He says, I'm, I'm running back to you now. I'm telling you, the Secretary of State will, as soon as he gets you a letter, and like Malik sends him certified, as soon as he gets you a letter, he will respond that day. He will answer you that day. And if you look at the Malik's letters, I, I don't think I put any on, the, on my webpage yet, but the Secretary of State says, very truly yours. So what that means is, like I say to people, it means that he's saying truly he is yours. He's your servant. That he's your public servant. So he recognizes that you recognize that he works for you. Because when I think the Secretary of State, I think we've been calling him Andrew or Andy. It's like, dear Andy, greetings. So it's because Malik wanted to say, uh, your honorable Secretary of State or Secretary of State of Illinois. No, you don't address the title, you address the man. And one, like if she was your butler, he wouldn't say, your honorable butler. You would just say, hey, Bob, or hey, Joe, my butler. Hey, Joe, come here, Joe, I need you to do something for me. 
Right. So you have to talk to them in a first name basis, and then all they'll right. yeah. That, that's all you have to do. I mean, I don't really like I said worry about all this MSO stuff. I mean, what if they make some called a TRW, and then right. you're going to chase a TRW form down? It's like uh, I don't care what you people are doing with your magic papers and your magic bonds. I'm not part of your world. I'm in a three dimensional world. I physically am holding this car. Somebody's going to have to physically come into court and claim that that car that I am physically holding, they should lawfully be physically holding, not me. Let them come and do that. Until then, you have no case. Yeah. That's pretty I'm simple. Not, simple logic, I'm, man. In the vehicle door, uh, could I put in there uh, private property, uh, uh, not for hire, and I'm a man? Uh, you mean for like a tag? You mean a license plate, like a tag? I put it on the front, uh, the driver's side door, and also the rear door, and possibly put a tag on there, a number that I make up. Well, I really want to put, a, like I said, like I, how are we seen it in New York? And I was a kid, it would just say private. It would either just say private or it say not for hire. It was just that simple. I mean, I'm only sure you could probably go on the internet right now and go buy a set of tags for five dollars each just say either private or not for hire right you don't even got to make anything up they already sell them you know and just say private or not for hire i mean believe me if you had a mercedes or a rolls royce or something like that or a cadillac something you think anybody would stop anybody who had an escalate that said private on it you think a cop would actually be crazy enough to stop a black you know limousine that said private on it not for hire and and ask him why does he have a private not for hire thing on it no, now if the guy long. If a cop does stop me and uh, I ask him if he's given me orders and I'm going to bill him for his orders? Yeah, that'd be wonderful. It's like, you know, you know, like I said, that, that that's that's a fun way that me and uh, Malik are going to try to work it because Malik doesn't have a commercial driver's license. And uh, it looks like, uh, uh, like I said, when, when, you, when you folks get DUIs out there, they're making you guys do crazy and crazier stuff. So what was funny with Malik, he did every single class, he paid every single fine. He did every single evaluation, drug test, piss test. He did everything they told him to do. And the uh, Secretary of State said, well, we don't believe you were sincere or honest enough in your drug assess uh, you know, drinking assessment. We really believe you have a bigger drinker problem than you really admitting that you have. Yeah, so uh, at, this time, at this time, we're not going to give you back your license. It's disgusting. It's ridiculous. It's not like I, said, I, said, I said, well, it's because you're, you live in the city of Chicago. And they got mass transit, and they want you guys to stop using your cars. They want you to go green, use the subway, use the buses, you know, the, you know, use mass transit. You know, that's what they want you guys to do. That's why I moved to Indiana. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, I like Indiana, man. I've, I've been all over it, man. It's really nice. It's a lot nicer than I thought it was. You know, I thought it was just uh, just plain. Uh, I thought first I thought it was full of hills, like, kind of like mountainy. And then well, it was just full Southward, there was no uh, glacier. There's a lot of hills and valleys there. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit, but it's a lot flatter than I thought it was. I didn't think it started getting flat until I got to Iowa, you know, you know, Springfield. I didn't think it got flat until way out there, but it gets pretty flat in Indiana. Right. But, um, yeah, like I said, and like I said, the, the the judges are loving this stuff, man, that they're handing in there. And uh, they're, they're laughing. They're asking in Indiana anyway. So two judges got the stuff so far, and they just said, boy, they had a good time, and the judges enjoyed it. So like I said, when people start realizing how simple this is, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun. Hey, the Carl, when you get a the chance. Don't, the prosecutors don't like it, <laughs> but the judges they're love left it. Out. What's that? They're left out. That's why they don't want to legalize drugs. Yeah, because yeah, all hey, 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 right, right. They're just sitting there, and then they they got nothing to do. Oh, so funny. Like the little guy said, the judge said, the little guy, do you want to proceed? And the little guy said, nah, let the prosecutor have another month like he wants it. Nah. And I said, no. I said, what well, you're supposed to say, you never say no in court. The judge ever says that to you? Always do that uh, conditional acceptance stuff, that Gordon Hall conditional. Not that big 37-word bullshit thing that he does. But you know what I'm saying. He's supposed to say, well, uh, yeah, you know what? I, you know, I would like to proceed. I'd like to proceed right to a dismissal. And if you don't want to dismiss it, then I'd like to uh, move to uh, getting me some sort of a scheduling fee for me reappearing here and uh, and have to come and take some time off from work and uh, 
reappear. So, yeah, that I'd like to proceed to. So either can we proceed to a dismissal without prejudice, because I'd be glad to come back here when he has a bona fide legitimate case against me. But if he don't, I'm going to require a scheduling fee, good judge, because you're getting paid to be here, and he's getting paid to be here, and she's getting paid to be here. I'd like to get paid to be here. We should all be fair and square. We should all be fair and just. We all should be getting a little bit of something for being here today. 